Malaysia is a land that is truly blessed. It has no volcanoes. It is free from tornadoes and hurricanes. It has enough rainfall to keep away severe droughts. A veritable Eden. Like others before it, the Malaysian Eden is not spared the adverse side effects of progress. The first signs that the balance of nature has gone off is the increasingly frequent floods and the deterioration of the water quality, especially in towns and cities. On the average, the country loses up to 100 million ringgit a year to flooding. Over the years, the Department of Irrigation and Drainage, DID, has done much to prevent the occurrence of floods. Much time and money have been expended on activities and infrastructure to prevent flooding, the widening of rivers, the building of buns along rivers, the construction of dams, diverting or rerouting of rivers, the building of pump houses. In the last three decades, billions of ringgit have been spent on flood mitigation. Yet the frequency of flooding continues to increase, especially in urban centers. It does not look as if the problem is going to go away. The ongoing development of the country continues to exact its toll on the environment. Erosion and sedimentation resulting from land clearing, construction of structures on river beds, the insensitive throwing of rubbish into rivers. These are some of the factors that have hindered the flow of rivers. The widespread urbanization that is taking place is not helping either. Due to the drastic changes in the environment, absorption of rainwater into the ground is greatly reduced. The inability of the rivers to convey the excess water load is what causes flooding. Under the conventional method, excess water is discharged into drains and rivers as quickly as possible. This is referred to as the rapid disposal approach. However, this is usually detrimental to downstream areas. The approach may have worked well in the past. Given the present rapid urbanization, it is no longer possible for the existing rivers to accommodate the large volumes of stormwater. Just as it is in busy city traffic, speeding up cars at one point only leads to congestion in another. In drainage terms, when water volume exceeds the capacity of the conduits, it overflows and flooding takes place, thus causing damage to property and loss of lives. Continually deepening and widening the drains and rivers is obviously not the answer. It costs too much, and in most cases, there never is enough land or space for it. The answer lies in using a different approach to the problem. Instead of regarding excess stormwater as a nuisance and getting rid of it as fast as possible, the new thinking looks at stormwater as a resource to be managed for maximum benefit. Instead of rapidly discharging the stormwater, the new approach emphasizes its retention and detention, in short, its storage. Central to this storage-oriented approach are some basic key elements. The first is infiltration. This is the process in which water passes into the ground as opposed to running off into some conveying medium. Naturally, the higher the rate of infiltration, the lower is the volume of surface runoff. Infiltration of stormwater can be improved through the use of stormwater retention facilities, such as porous pavements, dispersion trenches, gravel drains, swales, infiltration basins, recharge wells, the next key element in the new urban stormwater management approach is the retention and detention of the stormwater. Retention refers to the holding of stormwater and preventing water runoff. Detention refers to the temporary storage of stormwater runoff. Some of the facilities include detention pits, dry detention basins, wet ponds, wetlands, reservoirs, and lakes. 
In the new approach, excess water is still released into the drains and rivers. The difference is that it is regulated or slowed down. The attenuation of the water flow not only reduces the incidence of flooding, it minimizes or prevents flooding in the downstream areas. It does not damage the existing conveyancing infrastructure. The quantity of pollutant discharge into receiving waters is greatly reduced. The storage-oriented approach is already in practice in the country with encouraging results. Storage of water can take place at three levels. At the individual level, property owners can have storage facilities incorporated into their residential or commercial property. For example, small tanks, above ground or underground storage areas. At the community level, larger facilities can be constructed in public open spaces or in conjunction with public recreation and sporting facilities. For example, dry detention basins, ponds and flood reservoirs. At the regional level, large-scale facilities can be constructed at the lower end of the catchment prior to its discharge to receiving waters, for example, urban lakes and wetlands. In the conventional rapid disposal approach, drains are the major media for conveying water. They turn into swirling rapids in a heavy storm and can be dangerous to unwitting passers-by, especially children. The new system utilizes retention and detention facilities which are covered, safe and environment friendly. The country has already taken the road towards the renewal of its stormwater management technique. GPS have put all of this into a manual which we call the Manual Saliran Mesra Alam. In this manual, we have tried to put in the concepts, we have put in good examples, we have put in best practices from all over the world. And we believe that with the use of this manual, we will be able to tackle the problems of urban flooding at source. Cabinet has approved the use of uh, MASMA or this new manual for development projects in the country. JPS has also presented this at the National Council for Local Government. All the state governments have agreed to adopt MASMA as part of the development process. Like in all things else, a project to alter and revolutionize a way of life is always an uphill task in the onset. When MASMA first came out, there was a lot of concern about the fact that it could increase the cost of development. Doing development the way we have been doing uh, incurs a very high cost in terms of flood mitigation projects. Uh, the DID estimates that we require some 10 billion to solve our urban flooding problems. What MASMA would do would be to save the country additional costs in terms of flood mitigation projects. And in a number of examples, we even found that there could be savings in terms of the drainage systems. The new approach marks the beginning of a whole new world. One where unsightly open drains and trash-infested rivers are things of the past. Where floods are a rarity. And where rivers are what they are intended to be. Veins through which flows the lifeblood of the land. Man will live in harmony with his surroundings. No matter how urban the setting, no matter how frenzied the lifestyle, there will be little gardens and parks to provide a welcome distraction from the encroaching concrete jungle. It will be an Eden, where the amenities of modern living are within reach, where the vagaries of the weather can be contained, and the quality of the lifeblood of the land ensured.